Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Jonathan here. And in the last video, we started creating an enemy level up system. And in this video, we're just going to finish that job. And the good news is this video should be easier than the last. So first things first, I want to uh, fix an error I made at the end of the last video. Uh, if you recall, we have a variable up here called private int ship level, which is available to the entire enemy behavior script. And then, whoops, and then down here at the bottom, I tried to pass that through in these brackets, and then I redeclared it here as int ship level. So that's really not necessary. We can just get rid of that. Uh, we're over complicating things, and actually I'm surprised Unity doesn't give an error when you redeclare a variable that already exists like that. So just go ahead and get rid of that, and now we can get started. So to save ourselves some work, this part of the process is going to be a little bit more similar to how we level up the player ship. So we're just going to hop over into the player controller script and copy over some variables. So we have this projectile speed bonus. We're going to copy that one and uh, we already have, yeah, we have here projectile speed. So we're just going to drop that under projectile speed bonus. Uh, we have a firing rate bonus, which is a negative float value. We're just going to keep that the same. Uh, we are just we are going to change the name though to stay consistent. Uh, so it is shots per second bonus in this case, and we also have a health bonus. So we're going to copy that one over too, and we're not going to have to worry about uh, any max health in this case. Uh, health right over here. Okay, so let's go down now to this thing where we handle ship. Uh, the enemy ship level and actually change some stuff up. So in this case, we're going to do it pretty simply. We're just going to say projectile speed plus equals projectile speed bonus times ship level. And we're going to do that same thing for the others as two. Others too. So per shots per second plus equals shots per second bonus times ship level and health plus equals health bonus times ship level. Now, if you're smart here, you've already noticed the one problem that is bound to happen. Uh, if we haven't cleared any waves, the variable ship level is going to be zero and zero times anything is zero so we want to take care of that in advance with an if statement and just say uh, if ship level equals or sorry if ship level does not equal zero then we go ahead and do these calculations otherwise we just uh, we, well, we don't have to do anything we just leave it at its default value so we're only going to do this if we have cleared the uh, some prerequisite number of waves. And we can go ahead and test this out with some print statements. Uh, projectile speed is projectile speed helps if I spell it correctly. And do for the others too. Shots per second is shots per second and health is health. Okay, uh, go ahead, just do a quick test. And again, I'll speed up the video. Okay, well, there you have it. Uh, you might have been hard to see speeding up, but I noticed the enemies were taking more shots to destroy, and I can see in the console uh, that those values are getting changed correctly. So that is, for all intents and purposes, working. Great. Now, we want to also make our enemies look a little bit different. So if we go back into the enemy behavior script, we can create an array. And over here, we're going to declare public sprite and use the square brackets so it's an array. And we're going to just call it enemy ship type. We're going to save this, and now we're going to drag some extra enemy sprites in. Now, to save time, I already dragged enemy sprites in before I started recording this video. So you can go ahead, pause, and go to your assets folder and just drag some sprites in. And then fill up your array. And just make sure the array is the same size as the waves cleared required, or else you're going to have some problems. 
So go ahead and just enter in some different enemy sprites, use whatever type you want. No, there's no right or wrong in this case. Those guys. And once you've done that, head back over, and go into your uh, bottom of this script where we handle the enemy level ups. Don't need these print statements, we know it's working. And we're just going to say this dot get component sprite renderer open close parentheses dot sprite is equal to enemy ship type at position ship level minus one. And again, uh, if you're confused with what that minus one is, because our ship level is always going to be one higher than the actual value of the element. So element zero is ship level one, element one is ship level two, and so forth. So in this case, we need to refer to the actual element, so we're saying minus one. That's why we're doing that. And I'll, uh, I'm not going to test that out yet, because that should work. You can test it out if you want, but I want to get into... Uh, actually taking care of something we didn't do with the player controller, and that was handling our projectiles a little bit better. Uh, and this is actually something I forgot to implement at the time of doing our player controller, but I don't know if you could hear that. That was my Overwatch phone going off at noon. It's McCree comes on and says it's high noon, just because he should do that at noon. Anyways, uh, go into your projectile sprite, or your projectile folder, and we're going to make some changes here. We don't just want to update the laser color, we want to actually update the damage. But we might want to do this differently depending on if we're updating the enemy or the player. So first things first, I'm going to just change some names around to make things a little bit more sensible. So under update laser color, I'm going to get rid of the name color because we're also going to use this for updating damage. and. I'm going to change the name of this current level only refers to the player. So I'm just going to call this instead int ship level so it uh, can refer to both the enemy or the player. And I'm going to change that uh, here and here as well. Okay. And I'm also going to change the name of this array from player laser array to laser color array, and if you notice I'm spelling things the Canadian way, because that's my nationality, but if you're American you might want to just spell it the American way, C-O-L-O-R, uh, laser color array. And of course things are going to be broken now because I'm going to have to go into the player controller and uh, find where these things are now incorrectly named. So here we have update laser color, it's no longer update laser color, it's just update laser. And I think there was something else too, wasn't there? Uh, let's just test it out and see if we get an error if it works. Oh, it's working. Okay, I guess that was all I had to change. Oh, uh, the one thing that you will have to change though, is you will have to go back to your player sprites now, and you will have to redo the uh, the laser array. Or sorry, not the player sprite, but the laser itself because we changed the name so the laser essentially disappeared. So the player array was a size of six, and I'm just gonna have to redrag a set of sprites into those. But that's okay, I, I, I just wanted to, I don't wanna be duplicating work, so I wanna make sure that I'm doing this in the most efficient way possible, and naming things in a way that kind of makes sense as well. Okay, and now we're going to go over to the enemy laser, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to give it a size, and we're going to give it the same size as that we have number of enemies. And I'm just going to go back to the laser folder, and I'm going to drag in different sprites for these enemy lasers too. And again, there's no right or wrong way to drag them in. Just do whatever feels right. Okay, so now let's go back into this... A newly handled projectile script and add some extra variables. So we're going to need a public float a friendly damage bonus and we'll give that a default value of 50f and public float enemy damage bonus and again we'll give this a default value of 50f 
and this is probably going to need to talk to both our player and enemy behavior scripts. It may or may not. I actually, you know what? I, 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 if we needed to talk to them, we'll add those private things thingies there. But for now, let's just leave it like this. Okay, so we already know if ship level is zero, and this is going to work for both the player and the enemy laser. Uh, we're not going to do anything different. And in fact, this uh, get component statement should just work right off the bat for both the enemy and player ships. Um, that is once we actually declare it properly. Okay, so if we go into the enemy behavior script and we check for where we're actually creating those enemy lasers, which would be under the uh, fire, you can see we're instantiating a new game object and that new game object is called laser. So right here where we actually create the laser, we can add a new line of code and say laser.getComponent and we want to get the projectile script of that laser and from that script we want to call the update laser method and pass through the enemy ship level. So once again, we know we're creating a new game object. From that, we are accessing the script attached to it. We are calling the method called update laser, and we are telling it what our enemy ship level currently is every time that laser is fired. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Now, you might be tempted to look under these void on, uh, actually, on trigger, yeah, on trigger enter to these where the lasers are hitting and make some changes here because this is where you're getting hit, this is where you should be taking damage. Uh, it's tempting, but we're not going to be doing it this way because this is the enemy getting hit, but it's getting hit by the player missile. So we'd have to be, if we were trying to change the damage from here, we'd have to be changing the, enem the uh, player's missile from the enemy script and it just gets a little messy and confusing but if we do it from here where we're firing the laser we know that we're firing the laser from the enemy and we're updating the enemy's damage at that point it's just more linear it makes more sense you could do it the other way too but it would get really really confusing that way so we're not going to do it like that okay so going back into the this script here now we have to determine a way to figure out uh, if we're updating the damage of a friendly laser or an enemy laser. Now, there are several ways we could do this. I'm going to uh, do a little hack here, though. and We're going to go into Unity itself, and we're just going to use some tags. So under here, uh, if you click on either player laser and, and, or enemy laser and go to tag up at the top, we're going to go to add tag, and we're going to create two new tags, and we're going to call one of these tags friendly laser and the other one enemy laser. And you can have spaces, you can have capitals, but you have to type it later the exact same way. So just make sure you are typing this correctly. Then go into your player laser and make sure you're doing this on the prefab. Tag it as friendly laser. And likewise, go over to enemy laser and tag it as enemy laser. And this is going to just give Unity a way to tell apart very easily the friendly lasers from the enemy lasers. Okay, so now if we go back into our update laser, we can say if compare tag, another open bracket, friendly laser, type it exactly like you type the tag, two closing brackets, or else you'll get a syntax error. And in here, we can say damage plus equals ship level times friendly damage bonus. And if we want to just test that out, we can say print player current level is, and just put in ship level, just to make sure it's working. And we can copy this if statement down now and say, uh, instead of friendly laser, type enemy laser, and it's not friendly damage bonus, it's enemy damage bonus. And over here, uh, enemy current level is ship level. Okay, hopefully that makes sense what we're doing, but let's go ahead one more time and test that out to see if everything is going to work as it should be. Oops, 
And I can see right away I'm getting an error. Array index is out of range. So I should have tested this out. Okay, I'm just going to pause the video for a second and figure out what the problem is and come back. Okay, well that was a very easy fix. Uh, this this uh, this line of code should be within the if statement uh, because we're already testing out if the ship level only yeah, execute this if the ship level is not at zero. So I did say that earlier, but I made a mistake. Okay, let's go ahead and test this out again. Okay, well, I've tested out all the way. We're going into the final wave of enemies, and they're uh, getting stronger up to that point. Uh, every, and they're, you can see their sprites are changing, their laser colors are changing, and uh, they are taking more hits to destroy. So I know it is working. Uh, everything is working fine, and it's not broken. So if you've uh, come along this far with me, good job. So I'm going to have a challenge for you now. Uh, right now, all of our values that we're using for both the player and the enemy are very unbalanced. We were using it for testing purposes, uh, but things like number of waves to actually update an enemy life or the number of uh, the, the score you need to, to level up the player, it's all really, really low and unbalanced right now. So just pause the video and play around with all those numbers and including the level up bonuses and just come up with something that seems fun and balanced for your player. And if you have noticed any bugs, go ahead and pause and fix those now. Uh, I know there are a couple. Uh, play through and restart the game and see what happens. Uh, you might find some things are not working properly. So see if you can fix those things yourself. So pause the video and give that a shot.